chapter number 2. Stand with us, if you will, while we read a few verses here in 2 Kings chapter number 2. And I'll begin reading with verse number 1. 2 Kings chapter 2, verse number 1. And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah unto heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. And the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Jericho. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. And the sons of the prophets that were at Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy masters from thy head today? And he answered, Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Tarry, I pray thee here, for uh, the Lord hath sent me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And they too went on. And fifty men of the sons of the prophets went, and stood to view afar off, and they stood by Jordan. Elijah took his mantle, and wrapped it together, and smote the waters, and they were divided hither and thither, so that they too went over on dry ground. And it came to pass, when they were gone over, that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. It came to pass that they still went on and talked, that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire, and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind to heaven. And Elisha saw it and cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. He saw him no more, and he took, a, he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. He took up also the mantle, Elijah that, uh, the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he, had, when he also had smitten the waters, they parted thither, hither and thither, and Elisha went over and when the sons of the prophets which were to view at the Jericho saw him, they said, The spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him. Father, we thank you for the word of God. Bless it, I pray. Lord, I pray that you'd help me this morning. God, forgive me of sin. Cleanse me. And I pray, God, the spirit of the living God would move through this place. Lord, move up and down these aisles and around behind this pulpit. And God, help us today. God, that we'd feel the touch of God. Lord, I pray, let us leave here today knowing that we've been, Lord, where you're at. And, Lord, we'll thank you. Bless us now in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I, I skipped over a couple of chapters in the book of 1 Kings uh, that brings us to this place. Now, Elijah's ministry did not end when he was uh, when we preached the message on uh, depression to you last week. I never knew it would have the kind of impact that he did, but we, I'm glad we minded God, amen? Uh, but as we uh, read that chapter, we find later on that uh, Ahab dies. Elijah has some dealings uh, with Ahab again, and uh, Ahab dies, and uh, he wanted Naboth's vineyard. You go back, it's good reading. Read the story. We may go back there, we may not. Uh, but anyway, as time came to pass, Elijah and Elisha got together, and we find out in 2 Kings chapter number 2 that Elijah's ministry is over. As far as this part of his ministry, it is over. It's done. It's finished. God's finished with him. And uh, it's not something that uh, maybe Elijah wanted, but I guess he was ready to go. Uh, you know, I guess he figured his time was up. He knew he was going. And so he asked of Elisha, tell me one more time. Tell me one thing 
that I can do to you before I live. Before I leave. And Elijah, Elisha said, I want a double portion of thy spirit. Now let's get up to the speed here just a little bit. If you and I are saved by the grace of God, one of these days we're going home. Amen. Now, I've been born again by the precious seed of the word of God. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition uh, from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. You and I have been saved by the grace of God because we are born again by the grace of God. Amen. You're cleansed uh, through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The end of you is heaven with the Lord. And no matter how it takes place, if you're a child of God, there's coming a day when you too are going to heaven. Now this story and this picture of Elijah being caught up in a whirlwind is a perfect picture of the rapture of the church. One of these days, in a moment, in a twinkling of eye, you and I too, if Jesus doesn't come, if, if we don't go by the way of death and Jesus comes back, we too are going out as Elijah did. In the moment, twinkling of eye, we'll be together in the presence of the Lord forever, bypassing death. Amen? Now, I'd like for that to happen in my lifetime. I, I look for that to happen in my lifetime. I look to be translated instead of being put into a hole in the ground. But even if I do have to die and go by the way of death, I know that, that the Lord Jesus is going to raise me up. Amen? I know when he comes back, he's going to raise me up. And so Elijah, as he uh, went on and went into heaven, we find out that his disappearance from this earth was seen by Elisha. He was there as he witnessed that. Now, the, we've got our astronaut. The Russians have their cosmonaut, but Elijah was a was not. Amen. He was a was not because it says he was not. And so, friend, he was there and then he was gone, taken to heaven uh, uh, by the power of God. He was taken to heaven, but he's seen again. And uh, we'll get to that maybe at a later time. But anyway, we really know out of this scripture that it, there is life. Listen, you've got to believe the Bible, okay? you got to believe the Word of God. People look at me when I tell stories like this about Elijah and when I say things about what the way they said, you surely, they look at me like, you poor soul, you cannot believe that. How can you believe that one time there was a man that uh, uh, was walking along with somebody else and a whirlwind came and the chariot of the Lord came and just took him up to be with, in heaven? How can you believe that? I'll tell you how I believe it. I believe the Bible. Amen? I believe the Bible. Don't ask me to explain it all, but bless God, I believe it all. Amen? Praise God. I believe what the Word of God says. So the Word of God tells me that this is what happened, and I believe that this is what happened. And Elijah went on to another life. Now, friend, everybody in this building this morning is going on to another life. Everybody. There's not one person in the building this morning that's not going on to another life. Now, what that life is, is the choice you make while you're here in this, in this life. You make the choice where you spend eternity. Nobody can make that choice for you. Nobody can help you after you've died to get to heaven. You make the choice now whether or not you're going to heaven or whether you're going to hell. So for the believer, we know that there is a life after this that is a much better life. Death does not end it all for anyone. Now, this year I've preached more funerals than I have in the past and several funerals I've had, but you know, that's not the end. And I always tell the families that this is not the end of, of the person that you're putting in the grave today. This is not the end. Friend, life continues on after death, either in heaven or in hell. And it's the choice of you whether or not that you uh, accept Christ and go to heaven or whether you die lost and go to hell. It's the choice is yours, absolutely yours, and yours only. And you say, why are you telling us that this, this morning, preacher? I want to be sure that if you're here today and you've never been saved by the grace of God, that you know when you get to heaven, you won't be able to point a finger at the preacher and say, the preacher never told me that I was going to hell if I didn't receive Christ as my Savior. Elijah had a life beyond this life you and I have a life 
beyond this life. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 9, 27, and it is, as it is appointed unto man once to die, and after this, the judgment. Now, you and I have an appointment with death, and people say, well, Elijah didn't die. Well, he just missed his appointment. How many of you ever, ever missed a doctor's appointment? Sometimes they charge you for it, sometimes they don't. You had an appointment, you were supposed to go, but some reason or other, you had to change it or you just missed it. Well, Elijah just missed his appointment. That's one appointment that I hope I get to miss. Amen? I hope I get to miss that appointment. But, friend, if it comes my time to die, then I know the same Jesus that carried Elijah out. Amen? I know the same grace of God will help me when I leave this world. Amen? So Elijah was talking and walking with Elisha. Can you imagine Elisha walking along and and all of a sudden, here goes something going on. The wind starts stirring, and here comes a, here comes a chariot, and, and, and there gets Elijah in. Boy, don't you know, Elisha was, uh, boy, that, that shaped me up. I mean, that would shake me up. To, but Elisha, Elijah had prepared him and told him that if you stay with me, you're going to get to see it. So Elijah, Elisha stood there in awe as Elijah was taken from him. And on the way out, Elijah sat here, throw him out his mantle. Oh, my friend, what a blessing to know that Jesus, when he went away from us, he left us his spirit. He left us his power. So we know that, that uh, uh, he, he went away, and, and we know that Elijah, was as he went away, Elisha was watching him, and Elisha seen him go out. So there's Elisha after seeing Elijah go away, and he passes, Elijah passes on the work to Elisha for him to do a job. Now, you and I have got a work to do. We've all lost loved ones to death. About everyone in here has lost someone you love to death. But we must go on as believers. We must go on. In these last days, you and I must go on and serve the Lord. It's not over, friend, until it's over. Amen. It's not finished till it's finished. It's not all bad. Now you look at the world and it looks bad, but it ain't all bad. Amen. People are still being born again by the grace of God. People are still getting saved, and it's not all bad. Jesus is coming soon. Amen. And we look forward, and we have the blessed hope of the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. But one of these days as we walk in this life, Keep your head up. Amen. Keep looking toward the Lord. Every time you find a penny, pick it up and, and realize that your trust is in the Lord. It's not in this world. It's not in the Pope. Boy, I'm glad I could be glad that airplane leaves. Go on somewhere else. Amen. Let me hear. Let me see what else is going on in the world. But the whole world has gone after this man. Uh, the whole country. I've never seen. The news media gush over anybody. Boy, I'm going to get in trouble, sure as this world. But I've never seen the news media getting so much tr and getting so much uh, upheaval and gush over a person in my life. I told somebody, you'd think God had come back himself and was riding on an airplane. But I'll tell you something. If he's never been saved by the grace of God, 99% sure he's not because he wouldn't do and believe the things he believed. There's no hope for the Pope. Now listen to me, friend. What I've got's real. And even though this world may rush and gush after a religion and after a person, thank God, what if Jesus was to come back? Would he get the same reception? If the person of Christ came back, and that's what the Pope is supposed to be. You all know that, don't you? He's supposed to be the vicar of Christ. He's supposed, you know, people call him the Holy Father. Man, he gets up and puts it. Well, I don't put on the dress every morning, but he gets up and puts his dress on the same way I put my pants on. And listen to me. If Christ himself came back and people knew it was him, people could tell it was him, would they have the same reaction as, if a, as the man in flesh that the Pope was? Would that have the same reaction? I have no idea here we can hear. But would, I, I dare say they would not. I dare say that they would pick up stones to stone him if Christ himself 
pure righteousness, pure holiness is not accepted in the world today. And my, you know, we're just living in that age where right is wrong and wrong is right. But here's this man, here's this man, Elisha, that saw Elijah go away. And Elisha wanted to be what Elijah was as he went away. He wanted to bear the Spirit of God upon him. He did not want, you know, uh, 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 pride to get in his way. He wanted to be what Elijah was when he left here. That's what you and I should be. Jesus went away, and we should want to be like Jesus and like Christ. And that's in humility, that's in love, that's in compassion of lost people. And friend, that should be what we want. As Christ went away, that should be what we want. But so we see here that as Elisha stood there, and here come the mantle down upon, upon Elisha as, he, as, as Elijah was translated. We see that one day, friend, our loved ones are going to go on. Who's going to pick up the mantle of the godly that go on before us? You know what's happened in our world today? The mantle has been dropped. The mantle has not been picked up of godly people that have gone on before us, of godly preachers that have preached the messages for years. Many of those mantles are laying on the ground somewhere and nobody's picked them up and therefore the power of God is not as, not as real to a lot of people as it would be if they pick up the mantle and stay by God and stay by the stuff. Amen? Now, for what are you going to do? What are you going to do in this world? You, you know people that have, you know, we reminisce a lot. Nothing wrong with that. But I reminisce a lot and I think a lot about those that have gone before me, about the great preachers that I have known in the past. I think about Brother Harold a whole lot. I'll never get over Brother Harold. I think Brother Jack shook a whole lot. I'll never get over those men. Dr. Harold Seitler, I think about him a lot. They had the mantle of God upon them. They had the power of God upon them. And they preached like there's the last message they's ever going to preach to mankind when they got in the pulpit. Brother Ray Long, I remember him. I can remember Brother R.A. White. I can remember uh, Dr. Oliver Green. I can remember uh, many others that, that went up. Brother Billy Sunday. I never met him, but I've heard him preach. And I can think about him and lots of others. And they left their mantle for someone else to pick up and carry on. But you know what's happened? A lot of the mantles get left there. Nobody desires the power of God as they used to. Many believers don't want the power of God because it would cost them some worldly things. Boy, Lord dealt with my heart when I studied him for this. Are we willing to give up what we need to give up in order to have the power of God upon our lives? Are we willing to commit ourselves to the Lord? Are we uh, willing to give up worldly pleasures or those things that get between us and the Lord are we willing to give those up that we might have the power of God upon our lives Lord help us that we be willing to say Lord whatever it takes in my life God I'm willing to give it up in order that I might serve you in order that I might have the power of God on my life in these last days we're living in the last days of time we got a lot of important things to do, so we think, but there's nothing more, impo more important than us living our lives for the cause of Christ. What's the most important thing to you today? What is the most important thing in your life today? Is it what you're going to do after church? Is it what you're going to do next week? Is it what you're going to do the week after next? What is the most important thing in your life? Or is it to serve the Lord every day anew? Y'all know me, I've got, I've got, there's not a thing wrong with enjoying this life and enjoying worldly pleasures as long as it doesn't, as long as it doesn't go against God, against uh, the things of God, as long as it's not immoral. I don't, I don't see a thing wrong with a lot of things that happen except they get in the way of God sometimes. They, people put them first instead of putting God first. And I've fallen trapped. I've fallen into the trap if I'm not real careful sometimes of letting other things get in the way of my serving the Lord. I have to monitor real carefully what I do with this. I have to monitor real carefully what I do with that iPhone because it has taken, all these things are good, 
but it's taken a lot away from our social life. Did you know that? I like text messaging because I can get a, a, a point across real quick to somebody if I need to, but on the other hand, I hate it. It gets in my way sometimes. I drive, You know, I, I thought this is the craziest thing the other day. I thought this is the craziest thing the other day. I pick up my phone, and if it's working, call Libby. I don't even have to dial a number no more. Look at that. And it'll dial her number to me and I hope your phone's turned off. Or I can do this. Or I can do this. Send Libby a text message. Oh, I said too many things. Libby Coach. I love you. Yes. Now, what's, what's wrong with that picture? <laughs> See, the kids even get it. What is wrong with that picture? You want know, to tell you something? What's wrong with that picture? I just told her I loved her. Why didn't I just pick up the phone and call her and say, I love you? We've got a phone that we can talk to and it will tell somebody else what we're saying on the other end. I think her set up. She can mash the button in and tell her what I said. We've I, we come a long way backwards. But these, I mean, so many gimmicks will take the place of our serving the Lord if we're not real careful. How many of you have a smartphone? How many of you got games on your smartphone? Come on now. Some of you just ain't admitting it, I know. How many of you play those games on your smartphone? See, there ain't nothing wrong with that as long as it's not taking place away from your reading the Bible. As long as it's not play, taking place from you studying the Lord. I'm not against any of this as long as it don't come between you and God. But if we're going to have the power of God on our lives, we are going to have to live in such a way where everything in the world don't come between us and God. You know, it, I, they, they did a study. Now, I, this is not the way I planned the message, I'm telling you, but this is the way God's got it going, so I'm going to stick with it. Amen. Like it or not, amen, this is what the Lord says to say. They did a study about people and their phones. The younger generation cannot go without their phone. Most of the older generation either. Now, they did a study, and they took the, the smartphones away from a group of people. And they had some options of things in there they could do. Read a book. Uh, play a game. And after six minutes, there was one option in there that they could take also, and it was electroshock treatment. I'm serious. After six minutes, people were opting to take the electroshock therapy. I'm, have we gone crazy completely or what? Now, I give my dog electric shock therapy, and he don't like it. I got this little collar on him. When he does something I don't like, I press a button. He yelps and stands up on his back legs. He don't like it at all. And I'd actually done it to myself the other day. I didn't like it. I like to never got it off my neck. Because my wife had the controls. She was mashing the button and said, watch him, watch him, watch him. But seriously, friend, we, it's not nothing wrong to like. But I'll tell you something. We've got too many things going on to serve the Lord. We've got, I'm telling you, we've got too many things going on in our lives that distract us from serving the Lord. I'm not against sports, and you know I'm not. Like I said a while ago, I've... I've I took a little bit of interest in football. Don't know why. Never have liked it. Never had cared for it. But I found myself listening and watching the game the other day. <laughs> Just give them a quarter. That's all they're looking for is the quarter. Give them the quarterback. And they'll, they'll be done. But listen, nothing wrong with that as long as it don't come between you and God. But if it comes between you and the Lord, it's sin, it's wrong, and you need to get it out of your life because it's taking the place of God. It's your idol. 
Let me tell you just one more illustration, and I think I'll be done. Like I say, this ain't where I meant to go, but the notes have been gone out the window for the last 10 minutes. There's a preacher I know. I'm trying to remember his name. It was a funny last name. Maybe I'll remember it in a minute, but he's a good evangelist. And he was preaching at a church, and I've told it before, but you probably forgot. If you're not, you'll like it anyway. He was preaching at church, and they had, they had their communion table up here. And on that communion table, they had trophy after trophy. Over here on the wall, they had a, a big trophy case with trophy after trophy of, of the baseball games that their church league had won. And the preacher got up that morning, and, and uh, David uh, Sika was his last name. I, that's his last name. But anyway, he got up, and, and uh, the pastor got up, and he said what all the ball team had done this year, what they'd done, they just won a tournament. And this man was here to preach the Bible. Here's the preacher up here telling about the ball game, all that, all that the, the church had done and, and how many ball games they'd won. And here's the preacher trying to preach revival. And so he got up there and come to the preacher's time to preach, and he got to preach, and he said he thought he was in the flesh. He said he didn't know God was in that at all, but he said he went over and he grabbed up one of their trophies, and he picked that trophy up. Picked that trophy up, held it up in front of him, said, Behold your God. Well, that'd rattle anybody's cage, wouldn't it? And he dropped it. Accidentally, he dropped it and broke it. And they thought he threw it on the floor. And he walked out the door. Now, he thought he was in the flesh. I would, too. That's why I'm carrying around a basket of flowers. <laughs> but he thought he was in the flesh. He got out of there and went back to his motel room. He said, I'll never darken the doors of that place again. Them people don't want anything but their sports. And I'll never go in that church again and preach because, because they don't want nothing. They don't want God. All they want is their ball game. So he packed up his stuff and he was getting ready to leave town to knock on the door. Who in the world can that be? I don't know anybody in this town. He was, he was ill. He was upset. Now, if I was an evangelist and that was going on, I probably would be too. I'll just tell you. He went to the door and there stood the pastor in tears. In tears. He said, Preacher, you're right. He said, God convicted my heart. You're absolutely right. This has become what our church is all about. And he said, after you left, he said, we sat in silence just for a few minutes and people began to trickle into the altar and beg God for forgiveness. Now see, he didn't know God was in that, but God was in that. And said, he said, preacher, we beg you, will you please come back and preach to us? And they had a good revival at that church. He said he went back and preached and they had a good revival. All because he told them what their God is. What's your God today? Who is your God today? What is your God? Is it things of this world? Will you allow just anything to, to keep you away from the house of God? Will you allow just anything uh, to keep you from the word of God? Will you allow just anything to keep you from prayer? Those things that come between you and the Lord are your idols. That is your God. Whatever comes between you and the Lord. So preacher, I'll never come back and listen to you preach again. I'm sorry, I'm just telling you the truth. Anything that comes between you and the Lord will be your idol. And I love you with all my heart. There ain't a person in here that I wouldn't, I wouldn't walk through fire for, but I must tell you the truth. If we're to have revival as a church, we must put God first. We must put Him, hold Him in high esteem and be willing to do what God wants us to do. We must be willing to do that. What is your God? Who is your idol? Where will you spend eternity? These are all good questions. You say, you say preacher, I, I really like to see God move in the church and fill the church up and folks get saved. How many of you like to see that? Raise your hand. Oh, well, friend, I'm going to tell you, when the preacher comes, he's not coming with a briefcase full of revival. Matter of fact, I don't even think he carries a briefcase. But if he did, he wouldn't come carrying 
a briefcase full of revival. Revival comes right here in my heart, right here in your heart, when I determine that I want more of God than I want of this world. Amen? When I want more of God than anything else, that is when revival will begin in my heart. And I'll tell you something today, my friend. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, will forgive their sins and will heal their land. How is it with you and the Lord? Father, we thank you for the word of God this morning. Blessed, I pray. Lord, the message is in your hands. The results are in your hands. I pray right now, God, you'd help us, Lord, that we'd be mindful of thee. In Jesus' name, amen.